automatically constructing uh, wandering functions. And in fact, some of um, some of the uh, work that I'll talk about here was actually in support of uh, that project, basically doing some of the IO for hacking away at some of the one or 90 uh, data. So my research interests currently, um, as I'm working in industry, are related to uh, materials uh, for infrared sensing applications. So both conventional materials, but then also looking at possible applications of 2D materials in this field. Uh, my primary role is optico, opto, opto electronic device design, so modeling and simulation of device performance. Um, and then, of course, as a hobby, uh, FOSS development is something I'm interested in. And in fact, that's the capacity that I'm kind of here today. So I'm hoping that you, we might be able to connect on some of these platforms. Uh, if, if these are published in PDF, then these will be links that we can probably follow. So maybe just a, a quick motivation. So as we all know, Wanderer 90 is basically the, the go-to package for constructing uh, maximally localized Wanderer functions. And Python, as I would argue, is basically the de facto standard uh, programming language, high-level programming language for scientific applications, having many you know, high-quality numerical libraries, NumPy and SciPy are, are just some examples. And uh, there's many tools, of course, related to uh, Wanderer functions uh, that leverage the Python programming language. So, a couple of them were discussed during the, the summer school, as I understand. Aida Wanderer 90, I'm listing them here. Z2Pack, Wanderer Berry, uh, Python type binding. Uh, these are just a subset of what I imagine is uh, available. So, um, I, one of the issues I think that was you know, discovered and discussed already is that there's really no official standalone uh, package for doing Wanderer 90 IO in Python. Uh, standalone, I, I make a specific point about that because, of course, there's many routines that people have implemented in these codes, um, but they haven't necessarily been put into a, a single kind of common unified package. And I think that that's essentially what we're trying to discuss and, and do here um, this week. So basically, let me just kind of go through the purpose of uh, essentially what we're trying to do. And, and one of the first steps really is just to kind of establish a repository for such a package, a place that people can contribute and, and put routines that they may have already written for the, the purpose of 190.io, um, and then also identify collaborators, uh, both in like a formal sense, collaborators on GitHub, and of course, in an informal sense, those who may want to contribute um, uh, to the package. Uh, so uh, there's also an attempt to consolidate some of the existing IO routines. As I mentioned, there's many of them already out there for parsing the input files or reading the data files. Um, so can we get those into a common place? And then actually sit down and you know, think hard in some sense about what this API might look like to support not only the current IO needs, but also those that we might expect to be uh, needs in the future. And then um, hopefully we'll be able to actually put together a development roadmap, you know, what's some of the long-term um, development. And so on the right-hand side, just kind of showing, you know, how this might look like structurally, it's, it, you know, it's re rather simple. And, um, you know, of course, 190 is, is at the base of this kind of hierarchy, uh, maybe DFT below that, but Wanderer 90 can you know, create all the, uh, the Wanderer functions and has a lot of data, um, both inputs and outputs. And this is meant to be a layer between that and tools written in Python that depend on it only in the IO sense. So these are not built on top of it um, in, in, like a, in any manner, but really just the IO. So I highlight some of the routines or functionality that might be available in this package. Um, you know, parsing the files, I, I, I bold those because those are ones we've actually done so far. And then, of course, you know, maybe writing the win oh, excuse me, writing the win file should you be interested in, you know, doing this in a high throughput um, uh, uh, situation. And then reading some of the um, data files, so these IG files, AMNs, MMNs. Uh, th these are some of the things we have in mind. So the approach, I think, is uh, rather simple to start. Uh, basically, um, coming up with some really just simple text parsers. So being able to take the file contents of a win file or an NNKP file and be able to parse it into a usable structure, Python data structure, like a dictionary or NumPy arrays, for example. Um, and then also, I think it's important to establish what the architecture would look like for reading the AMN, MMN, IG files. I mean, it may not just be as simple as parsing it into array, especially if you're working in a situation where you need to do this in parallel. Uh, these files are very large. You may not be able to fit them all in memory. How do you have a, a, you know, a functionality that enables you to do that? Do you read from file? Do you need to be able to read from a, like a stream of bytes, for example. So these are things to consider. Um, some of the stretch goals here, uh, in addition to what I just mentioned, would be to actually publish this on PyPy. I mean, that would be a, a pretty big milestone. So packages can pip install this, for example, um, uh, you know, just install the package. I, I kind of had a couple other thoughts in terms of 
using f to pi or f90 wrap to to wrap the uh, library functionality that Jerome discussed um, as a possibility of kind of getting some of this interface for free. And I think that's going to be the subject of some discussion during the working groups. So current progress, and I, I, unfortunately, I can't really claim the first bullet point yet. That's something I'll do this morning. Is actually creating the repository. Of course, I have one, you know, local to my computer. Not very useful to everyone else, but you know, we should uh, uh, create this repository on on GitHub. It has a very robotic sounding name, you know, one year ninety pi libio. This is something that we, of course, could change, and hopefully, we'll, uh, you know, through discussion with Giovanni and other developers, maybe move this to the one year developers organization. That would, I think, be a, a you know, a, a desirable end state uh, or end place for this to be. So I've already implemented some parsers for the win files and NNKP files, and I'll kind of show you an example of what that looks like. And, uh, you know, currently it just parses the file contents, as I kind of imagine. So the user is kind of responsible for opening the file, reading, you know, the string basically, and um, it can be parsed into a, a dictionary or um, in some cases, some of the, the, the objects are uh, NumPy arrays, like K points, for example, it's natural to express like that. So I, I kind of alluded to this. I already have some implementations, again, among many others and other codes for reading the, the other data files, I, I files and projection matrices and so on in another package that is in, in some sense defunct that I haven't really contributed much there. But um, you know, after we discuss the API, this may be, there may be some opportunity to kind of copy that over um, in a sense. So. So uh, this is uh, a bit of an eye chart. It's just kind of discussing a little bit of the package structure. I mean, in some sense, an invitation to you to, uh, um, you know, look at, at at the structure and see where you might be able to fit in, you know, some of these pieces. So it, it kind of leverages a pretty standard, you know, Python package um, structure with, uh, you know, different directories for the source. It has a test suite, um, documentation, and then a variety of like kind of repository configuration files. Um, for doing uh, the automated continuous integration through GitHub workflows. Um, I, 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 in fact, was the one who implemented that in Wanir 90, uh, uh, the base uh, code, uh, doing the testing through GitHub Actions. So there's an example of that. If I, I don't know if I can highlight this, but uh, in this link, uh, there's pre-commit checks. So, you know, a lot of the work that's been done is actually kind of putting the machinery in place to allow other developers to contribute and uh, be part of a kind of, um, you know, a a uh, robust package. Uh, a couple other points maybe to make here is uh, the documentation is done with make docs is kind of a cool um, documentation generating thing that uses markdown basically like Sphinx but markdown instead of restructured text if you're familiar with that. And then testing with PyTest again another standard tool basically in this ecosystem for, for doing testing. So uh, I, I, I fortunately I imagine this is a bit small to read so I'll just kind of uh, read it in some sense here that uh, there are some considerations to be made. So this discussion basically started in an issue on AIDA 1 or 90, where there was uh, the, the, the no, uh, you know, notice that uh, it would be nice to have this tool available, a, a package for doing the 1 or 90 IO, but the existing one that I had written, for example, read files and for AIDA 1 or 90, it really needed, it didn't have access to the file system. So it needed to be able to read from a stream, for example. And so it's kind of highlighted in this issue. And so, you know, something that needs to be taken into consideration when developing these is making these routines, accept a kind of large variety of, of inputs, files, file handles, byte streams, um, and, you know, be able to do things iteratively instead of all at once. And on the right-hand side is just a couple um, examples of the signatures of the, the parsing, uh, parsing routines. So as I kind of mentioned before, you know, large part of this is, you know, the machinery to enable kind of future development. So I have a, a just a, just couple expansion on a couple of the tools. Uh, again, this is a bit of an eye chart. You know, the documentation with Make Docs uh, uses a, a very uh, popular uh, UI library called Material. So it makes these very, in my opinion, very clean, nice-looking technical documentation, and you kind of get the styling and a lot of the niceties uh, for free, and all you have to do is write markdown. So it's something that everyone probably uh, can pick up quickly or already knows. And then on the testing side, actually have uh, established a, a, a test suite that basically can pull down all the one year versions, um, build the executables, and this is meant to be done in a continuous integration environment on a on a particular architecture, so we know what it looks like. 
And then the, the routines basically go and parse all the win files, parse all the NNKP files, and make sure there's no exceptions. A fairly standard test. And of course, other tests can be added to this, um, especially if you want to test you know, proper um, reading of the, the data files. Um, so this is just an example output of you know, the, the testing, the NNKP parsing and win parsing. And it, it looks duplicated because that's different one year version. So at this stage, it kind of passes the test suite for these versions. And this can check for like backwards compatibility or forwards compatibility as new versions are released. So I kind of want to touch a little bit on the core functionality. Um, and it's largely related to um, regular expressions and kind of pattern matching, because we're talking mostly about parsing the text file in the win. So there's um, you know, the concept of you know, parameters, blocks, comments, and then we have regular expressions that know how to match these kind of three you know, categories of um, textual uh, components of a win file or even an NNKP file. And so this is kind of like the core module. And then we have a, a variety of um, kind of like low level routines for extracting all the comments, extracting all the parameters, extracting the blocks, and then given a list of the blocks, you can kind of further process them and say, well, what does a K points block look like? What does a unit cell block look like? And kind of, um, you know, uh, in some sense, unpack uh, the information in there. So turning a K points block into an array of, you know, NK points by three, uh, it would be one example. So I also uh, put together a CLI to a command line uh, tool uh, that's essentially meant to be used as a development tool. So something that you can, from the command line, say, parse me the win file, and it'll print to the screen uh, the, the Python dictionary that represents that win file. And you can you know, inspect and make sure the parameters look right. You can even ask it to say, well, you know, parse me this particular parameter, parse me that particular block, and um, inspect it uh, to make sure the parsing is done properly. But also there's an opportunity to adapt this to make conversions. Uh, I think Giovanni mentioned this, like JSON files. Imagine you want to convert a win file into a JSON file to be used in a, like a web-based um, environment. So that, that would be one option. Or I think the discussion recently is, can you convert this to an HDF file, uh, HDF5 file, and be able to use this in like a parallel IO type application? Um, is it, it, this could be adapted or, or hacked in some sense to, to do that. So I, this is very busy. Uh, I think the color scheme is the main thing to pay attention to. So on the left-hand side, I have a, a, an example of a win file. This is the gallium arsenide example. And you know, the different components, as I kind of alluded to, the, the, the comments, the, the parameters, the blocks are in different colors. And on the right-hand side is the, the parsed win file. And you can see that there's a, a you know, variety of keys. There's a, a key for the blocks that actually has the text of the blocks extracted. Um, there's a text for the comments. Now, unfortunately, these aren't like kept in any particular order. The comments is probably not all that useful. Um, the blocks is mainly just to kind of get it all in a text format. And on the right-hand side of that panel is, is really the important pieces, the, the parameters. It's just a dictionary of parameter value um, uh, pairs. And then, you know, the, the, the blocks themselves have been broken down into kind of different structures. So the atoms block, the, the unit cell block, the k-points block, um, are, are part of that structure as well. So this is uh, essentially what you would get if you said, you know, parse me the contents of a win file. This is the structure that you get out. So the next steps, I think, and, and next steps meaning like, you know, what we might hope to accomplish, you know, during the, the rest of this week is, you know, some more um, bookkeeping type things. You know, we need to discuss what the licensing would look like. Um, you know, again, this is a, somewhat of a silly name for the, for the library, a, a bit robotic. So, you know, can we come up with something that's a little bit more interesting sounding? Um, of course, maybe a, a large committee like this is gonna yield something uh, that'd be maybe difficult to do, but discuss potentially moving this to the one year developers organization. I find that to be probably the most natural home. Um, and then there, there's an opportunity to kind of fill out other areas of the repository. The, the README, the documentation is all kind of like bare bones, you know, just a skeleton of what it would what it would look like. Didn't want to invest too much time when it's probably going to be in, in flux um, early on. Uh, and, and then, you know, some other items like a contributor's guide and code of conduct, uh, kind of boilerplate stuff. And then I, I think the primary thing to do is really sit down and think hard about what the API would look like for reading the um, data files. So I think the, the win and the NNKP is probably straightforward, but the the matrices, uh, UNK files, and, and I didn't include on here, but like checkpoint files, um, you had mentioned, you know, that that would be worth reading uh, the actual Fortran files as well. So there's a couple issues related to this, and I, I just highlight some of them here um, related to parsing uh, in particular. So 
you know, uh, the, the discussion of different field sizes to make sure that you don't have, um, you know, fields kind of running into each other. And if you're going to split on a space, of course, you can't have two fields, the numbers butting up. So that's, I, there's links to these issues. One of them, I think I've had some discussion with Jonathan on GitHub is, you know, how the actual uh, bands and uh, there's this new feature called select projections that was released in 3.1, you know, these integer ranges, how you actually define those. And there's a little ambiguity is, you know, using commas and spaces and semicolons all as list, um, you know, delimiters, you know, we might need to clean that up a little bit to, uh, to make parsing um, a little bit easier in terms of not needing a bunch of kind of gymnastics to, to kind of get it uh, to work correctly. So this is something that we can talk about. Um, so yeah, just kind of in closing, you know, I'm, I'm of course interested in working on other projects, uh, as you might imagine, you know, the, the development tooling is kind of a, a thing of mine. I, I contributed to several projects that it's, it was really just like doing GitHub actions, you know, because I kind of got a hankering for that. So I'd be happy to work with other projects and, and kind of put some of this type of uh, know-how in there. Uh, should that be useful and yeah, happy coding. Thanks. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Okay. <laughs> I'll, start, I'll start from the, the closest one, from the nearest neighbor. It's more like a comment. Thanks a lot already for all the work you did. Uh, maybe, <clears throat> personally, we need to discuss what I think putting in many developers is a good idea. I think the important thing to discuss is probably understanding who wants to be a maintainer of it. Because I guess this might require a, a bit, a little work, probably not too much. And uh, I think it's important to even to see who wants to contribute already now, maybe you already have everything in the end, but maybe and how, also who can maintain it in the midterm at least. But, uh, I'm happy to be involved. Uh, I won't be able to do it myself alone, but if you are there, maybe someone else can help. Uh, I think it's so good. No, that's a good point. I think there's, uh, you know, opportunity for someone to take responsibility. I, I think that this is something I could probably, um, you know, uh, push forward early on. But of course, we would need other people to, to be there as well. I think there's been, uh, and, and through the GitHub discussions, I think there's been a couple of people that have said, you know, I can contribute here. I just can't be the driver. So I, I'm happy to, to help drive it. And then, you know, of course, getting support from, from others. Uh, just to understand what is the stage now. So basically you have only the win file now reading and writing, but not uh, the AMN, CHK that you don't have now, right? So oh. yeah, it, it's, there's kind of two pieces. So one mm -hmm. of them was a package I'd written several years ago mm -hmm. that has all of what you mentioned. So reading mm -hmm. the AMI checkpoint, mm -hmm. UNKs, but it was done by an older me who knew very little um, compared <laughs> to now. Um, so I think there's an opportunity to copy some of that into this kind of new, kind of somewhat from scratch with the understanding that I can talk with you and others to see what that API would look like. Maybe the function signature changes, but some of the guts of the routines that were written previously can be copied over. Mm -hmm. So I do have a routine for reading the checkpoint file, for example. It's just not present in this particular repository, kind of pending, you know, understanding from the other codes. What should the routine interface actually look like? Um, and hopefully the debts are mostly the same. Uh, so, uh, so I just had a suggestion. So like, uh, you talked about testing, right? So, you know, how do you make sure that when you read the win file, it's read in the same way that Vanya 90 would read it. And I'm thinking maybe like as a part of the testing, you could have like F to Pi interface for some of the Vanya 90 routines. And then you kind of run your own routine, read the object. And then use the actual routine from Vanya 90 through F to Pi, and see what, what does that function, you know. And then make sure that you know they kind of read things consistently, because you know I think some, sometimes in these input files and they're like you know as you said there are multiple ways to specify something, you know, like a, with a column or a comma, you know, yeah. have the indices, and you know, so you know maybe that's a way to kind of cross check that you're kind of reading in things well or something. No, it's a good point. I, we've done a little bit of this um, in the sense that. We can parse the win file and then pre-process the win file to get the NNKP file, then read the NNKP file and then cross-check things like exclude bands, K points, and then even the projections. So you can read the projections like SP3, 
and then look at the and then KP file and it has it in the MR RL representation and then check that those agree. So you can't do it for all the inputs, but you can do for a subset. But yeah, it would be good to check with the actual Fortran routines themselves. Thanks. Other questions? Online? On Zoom? So if not, let's thank again thank you. Jamal. Okay, so this was the last talk for this morning. Now we have, uh, you know, quite some time for free discussions and uh, coding, if you wish. But before that, maybe Giovanni and Misha and Stefan and Roxana, we, we sort of make groups like yesterday afternoon and, and then we leave everyone free to, to work on what they, they prefer. Um, so there is, yeah, we, we, so there is one group that emerged this morning is this PW2090, where I listed Jun Feng, Giovanni, and Jemo. Is there anyone else who would like to be assigned to this group? Uh, raise your hand, otherwise, like Valeria. Andrea. Who we, do we put in charge? Uh, I don't know. Who, who wants to be in charge? Uh, what is your thank you? Thank you. Uh, I think yesterday there was uh, quite demand for the group on the electron forum. Okay, so, Roxana will be the head. Okay. So that's specifically the board. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. So far. You think it will be too broad? Okay, okay, your name? Giovanni. Huh? Giovanni. Giovanni. Giovanni, like, like Giovanni, like pizza. Like pizza, but, but uh, with a different son. Ah, maybe a comment for those who are connected online, if you can hear me. So, uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit complicated to interact with you online, but what we can do is that you look at the groups that are being written on the blackboard and then if you want to interact with, Andrea, yeah. with one of those groups uh, you you know you okay. you contact the the person who's in charge of that group the one that we circle and and then you know the group decides how to do it if you want to have it on zoom or not and... okay you all, 